America's ocean, incomparable cradle of life. The ocean gives us food and fuel, wealth and health, places to play, places to work. But our demands of the ocean are expanding at an unprecedented rate. Today, we need our ocean more than ever. And never has the ocean more needed our help in return. In 2010, the United States adopted its first ever national ocean policy. A policy that now calls for bringing together people from across the societal spectrum to carry out a new, far-sighted strategy for sustaining the country's ocean, coasts, and Great Lakes. It is founded on a branch of conservation, more formally known as ecosystem-based management, more simply as a common-sense approach to preserving life. If you rub it the other way, it gets a little bit rough. It feels like sandpaper, right? It is backed by science and based on the needs of the human community in balance with that of its ecological provider, the sea. So we have things that happen right here in Iowa that end up affecting folks thousands of miles away, fishermen trying to fish in the Gulf of Mexico. Shipping is extremely important to this economy. We generate about a million jobs in California. One in eight jobs in Southern California is associated with the port activity. And then nationwide, it's between three and four million jobs. So I see marine spatial planning as a tool that will help ports uh, delineate the area where traditional maritime uses are going to be protected. Scientific research. Do we need it? We're finally getting it. Thanks to our reserve. If it's not too late. No, it's not too late. Our I fisheries. said if. Yes, it's not. When in 1992, Stellwagen Bank became a national marine sanctuary, it inherited a long and busy history of boat traffic. The sanctuary's waters are plied by all forms of vessels, and that has posed a growing challenge for the largest and oldest residents of Stellwagen. Well, the problem that we're trying to deal with in, in this particular piece is really North Atlantic right whales and humpback whales and finback whales, all these endangered species, being struck and killed by large commercial vessels. By that I mean uh, ships that are 300 gross tons or more. Well, Accelerate Energy I looked at the market in the northeast U.S. as far as there was a great energy need here and we have a solution to bring an incremental supply of natural gas to uh, the Northeast. And that's where we developed the Northeast Gateway Deepwater Port. We knew coming in that the whales would be an issue. So I got this phone call from these guys at Accelerate going, hey, you know what, time is money. Every day, we're not in the water. That's, that's costing me a million dollars and people sitting around waiting to start building this terminal. Fix it. With Accelerate's financial clout, Cornell's bioacoustic know-how, Woods Hole engineers, and Stellwagen's marine biologists all on board, the unlikely collaboration took to the water, developing the nation's first ever acoustic whale detection system. As soon as the vessel enters the shipping lane, we reduce our speed to 12 knots or less. We put personnel on the bridge of the vessel, and they start generally scanning for marine mammals. I think it's much better when you have buy-in from the industry on this sorts of decisions, and if, 
everyone from the Port of Boston was screaming and yelling and calling their politicians, it can really derail this sort of process to the detriment of the whales. And there's all these competing uses for the ocean, and they're all valid, and there's stakeholders standing behind all of them, and we need to find a way to help them coexist and to uh, make sure that we preserve our resources for future generations. Tourism is the number one industry here in the Keys. People come down here to go fishing, they come down here to go diving. They come down here to enjoy our climate, our environment, to enjoy the beaches. The tourists that come down here spend $1.2 billion every year. And that's before the economic multipliers kick in. So someone has to be here to keep a pulse on the, this environment while the four million visitors come down every year to enjoy this environment. Kazi forged ahead, forming the nation's first Sanctuary Advisory Council, bringing in respected representatives of all that had a stake in the health of the Keys. The Council's solution was to partition the Keys' most critical areas, borrowing some time-tested techniques from the Great Barrier Reef in Australia the Council adopted a special set of marine zones to protect the sensitive reefs from overuse and to separate conflicting uses. And ironically, in separating the people, it brought them together. We all work together and, you know, we do what's best for the environment. If it makes sense, the fishermen are for it. If it doesn't make sense to us, you know, we can have a problem with it. But uh, in general, you know, we hash these things out and uh, we try and do what's best for the resources. Right now, we're trying to equate the economy with jobs. There's not a better way to do that than to protect the very environments that generate so many jobs, such as those around our ocean, coastal, Great Lakes environments. If we protect those environments, then we will create the opportunity for more jobs, which will help the economy. We have the opportunity. Now we need to implement the National Ocean Policy. You know, just the fact that we had been on the ocean for all of those years and that many people for that long. Um, we actually um, can propose some really valuable conservation measures based on what we know. And so what we're trying to do is use the local knowledge and the science together for conservation. Port Orford's ecosystem-based project is officially recognized by the state of Oregon. As part of this kind of first ever agreement with a local coastal community to help us really as we move into more and more uh, and, and better science oriented management of the nearshore marine environment that the state owns and manages. So that's what really kind of started me down this road. I wanted to have some voice in our future here instead of letting you know other people tell us what our future is going to be. We wanted to be part of it. And so what we're trying to do is use the local knowledge and the science together for conservation. You know, we really need the focus to be on the ocean um, now. It hasn't been in the past, and it's really important. So we see clearly that jobs can go with conservation, that we can continue to fish, let's extract fish from the ocean, and do it right and have a conservation ethic around how we fish and, and still have our jobs and, and have our income for our families. We need a healthy marine environment and we need resilient coastlines. Increasing water quality, decreasing nutrient introduction, um, increasing and, and restoring and improving habitat function um, all of those things build toward a, a healthy marine environment. And they don't need to, to come at the cost of economic development. The important thing is that the ecosystem retains its resilience, its ability to survive. 
And that goes also for the people who live along the coasts. Uh, we, we want resilient um, communities. We want communities that can withstand floods, withstand hurricanes, withstand other threats that, that may occur and, and still survive. And so if our, if our human communities, if our animal communities, you know, can be resilient, uh, that, that's the most important thing.